This video here, I'll be showing how to use API's Freshwater Master Test Kit. When you look inside, you'll find the instructions, as well as all of your different solutions that we'll be needing to do the tests, and four of these test tubes. And what we're going to be doing is getting our sample out of the tank and filling it right up to this line here. So the first test that I'm going to be doing will be for ammonia. And then uh, the last one that's in the instructions that I'll be doing will be the, uh, the pH test. However, stick around till the end of the video because there is one other test that you can uh, do with this out of this kit here that is not in the instructions. And I'll do that last after the pH, so stick around right to the end. On the back of the instructions, there's a color chart. And we're going to be doing the ammonia and the nitrites first. So there's two different bottles of solution for ammonia. Here we got bottle number one, and it takes eight drops. We're going to want to shake that up really well. I'm not going to show shaking all the bottles up, but all these bottles need to be shaken really well before using them. Now this one... For bottle number one, we need eight drops. And then I'm going to shake up bottle number two, which also requires eight drops. cap on give it a good shake now for the ammonia you need to wait about five minutes for it to be finished just give it about five minutes now for the nitrites there's only uh, one bottle that's required and that is five drops So I'm going to let that sit for five minutes now. Top one yellow, that's what you want. So we're all good with the ammonia level. And now with the nitrites, we are also at zero, which is also what you want. Got that nice blue. No purple, it's blue. That's what we want. So we're fine with both of them. So moving on to the nitrates, there's two bottles for this as well. And I'm going to shake them both up. Shaking all the bottles up. So bottle number one, right here, this one requires 10 drops. So I'm going to go ahead and put 10 drops in there first. Now with this test, it is a little bit different. Put the 10 drops in. One, two, three. Now with this test, after you put those 10 drops in, you're going to want to give it a good shake. Make sure it's mixed up real good. And then, when you go to put in the second bottle, bottle number two also takes 10 drops. You want to make sure this bottle is mixed up very well. Otherwise, you can get a, uh, an inaccurate reading. Really mix it up well. I'm going to put the cap on. I'm going to mix that up really well as also. And we're going to let this sit for five minutes. Now this test here for the nitrites. You can't get rid of nitrites out of your tank unless you have a planted tank. Uh, plants will consume the nitrates. But if you don't have a planted tank, then you're going to want to do a water change. If you're at 40 parts per million or above, which is the uh, the red the red mark down here where I got the X, you're going to want to do an immediate water change, maybe 25-30%. And then the next day you'll, uh, you'll want to test for it again and make sure that those numbers have come down. 
Um, like I said, a, a little bit is good for a planet tank. I actually like mine to be at about 20 parts per million right here above it in the orange. That's where I would like it to be. Okay, so it's been five minutes now. We're just going to look and see. So we're at about, I think we're right at about five parts per million. So we're, we're well within the, the parameters that we want to be in. Um, like I said, I would prefer it to be more down around 20 because I do have plants in there. But this is fine. I don't need to do a water change. Uh, one last thing that we're going to test now is the pH. For the pH test, when you look at this chart, you'll see there's two columns for the pH, pH and high range pH. So when you test your water, use the, uh, the bottle for pH, three drops. This, if you, uh, if you come down and you get a, a blue down here at a 7.6, this means you're 7.6 or above. So you're going to want to do the test again using the high range pH bottle, which takes five drops. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm already gonna need to use the high range, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the other one first. I have well, well water here. I have hard water with high pH. I'd be surprised if uh, I get any reading other than that blue for the first one. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put the three drops in. And I shook this up real well. So like I, like I figured, it's reading a 7.6 or above. So I am going to go ahead and do the high range test, which will take uh, five drops. So it's looking like I'm close to a 7.8 from my pH. Which is fine. I'm going to be making uh, the tank where I took these samples from. Eventually it's going to be a, uh, a cichlid tank, which will be fine for those guys. One last test that's not in the instructions that I'll do. So the, uh, the nitrate bottle, bottle number one. If you take one drop of this and put it on a rock and you get a reaction, that means that there's a lot of uh, carbonates and uh, bicarbonates in there that will dissolve slowly over time and will change your water chemistry, making your water harder and increasing your pH. And when it increases your pH, it will, uh, it will top out usually around 8.2 to 8.4. And it's real easy. Wash the rock first. And the reason to wash it first is to get any debris off of it so that uh, you're actually getting a reading off of the rock and not what might be on it. So you just put one drop on, see if you get a reaction. And there's no reaction on this. It happens right away if you're going to get one. There's no reaction on this rock. Now let's see about this one here. And that's a reaction, how it's bubbling up like that. So that's going to increase your, uh, your water hardness and your pH. And one more thing I do want to mention is these, uh, these test tubes here. After you clean them out, let them dry and sit. But don't, after you wash them out, don't put these on until you're going to use it again. Uh, a lot of times they will stick right on there. And when you try to get them off, they'll break. These test tubes are really fragile. I just wanted to show you, I do use other stuff too. Like I use these strips here. And it, it's basically the same thing. You just match it up on the back. They're not as accurate, but I'll use these because it's quick, it's easy. Uh, and what I'll do sometimes is I'll actually cut this in half. And that way I can I get uh, two tests out of one strip. Uh, to test the pH, these little indicator papers. You just take one of these, you get it wet, just like you would with the, with the, uh, the strips there. And then you match it up. I don't use a whole strip. You can see this one I cut in half. And I'll cut it in half and I'll test. These things aren't as accurate as the uh, master test kit if you do it correctly. Um, but I use it a lot and if I see there's a, some kind of a situation or maybe there's a problem, then I'll go ahead and definitely do my uh, the test with the master test kit. 